Thou joy of loving hearts, thou fount of life, thou light of men, from the best bliss that earth imparts, return and fear to thee again. Thy truth and change hath ever stood, and seest thou that on thee. to worship this uh, first Sunday of Advent. This is the Happy New Year in the church worship calendar. Uh, the church here starts today, and it will take us through the life of Jesus and the coming of the Holy Spirit with the result that we celebrate the salvation we have by grace alone in the cross and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We welcome those of you who are gathered here in our auditorium, those in the fellowship hall that are worshiping with us and those watching online this morning as together we join with the worship of Christians around the world giving thanks to the Lord. Today we will celebrate the Lord's Supper. So I hope you've picked up one of the Lord's Supper packs on your way in. If not, take a moment to do that as we get started. If you belong to Jesus by baptism, if you believe Jesus is your Lord and Savior, and if you desire to serve him, you are welcome to participate and join with us in this celebration today. I invite you to rise now in body or spirit as we come to the Lord in worship. These words from Galatians 4. When the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. Since you are no longer a slave, but God's child, and since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. The hope, peace, love, and joy of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
Today, we light the first Advent candle, the candle of hope. We look forward to the coming of Jesus, who is our hope now and forever. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope. 1 Peter 1 through 3. In this hope, we look forward to celebrating Jesus' birth on Christmas look forward to Jesus coming again. As we light the candle, think of a time when you faced a difficult time with hope in what the Lord would do for you. Dear God, as we light this candle, we pray that you will shine the light of your hope into our hearts and into our world. Amen. Let's rise by your spirits.
you may be seated. But if I can have some of the little kids come on up here. We got some work to do. We have this nice display reminding us we're in the Christmas time, but we have a little more decoration to do. So come on up. Come sit with me. Come on up over here. Let's sit around this wooden tree that we're calling the Jesse tree because it reminds us of the promises of God. Okay? So, as you said, I want to give you a sticker. Okay, would you like a sticker? There we go. Sticker, here's one. Okay. Okay, they got one. You got one. Who else needs one? You got one? Oh, okay. Who else needs one? What's that a picture of, do you think? What is that? What's it look like? Stars, stars right? Yeah, it's stars. So I want to read a little story about stars from Genesis 15 with Abraham and Sarah. So listen to this. The Lord spoke to Abram in a dream and said, Do not be afraid. I will keep you safe. I myself will give you many good gifts. And the Lord gave Abraham this message. You will have your own son, and he will be the one who shares the blessings I give. The Lord took Abram outside, and he said to Abram, Look up at the sky. Count the stars. Can you count the stars on your sticker? How many? Seven? Are there seven stars in the sky? How many? More? Are there more? Yeah, there's way more. There are too many for you to count. Then God said, this is how many descendants you will have, and this is how I will bless the world. And Abram believed, and as a result, the Lord accepted Abram as right with him. So this, these stars, this is a story of hope for us. God is doing something in our lives, in our families, in your life too. And we wait for that. We wait for that at Christmas, for God to show us the coming of Jesus. So that's what these stars remind us of, the hope of God. So can you now take your sticker and stick it on our tree over here? Can you put it on here? Put it wherever you want to put it. Can you put it on? Nice. And then we're going to pray together when everyone has put their star on. Can you get it up there? Yes, good. That's a good place. Is Grandma having trouble with the sticker? <laughs> Okay, all right. Everyone put on. Let's pray together, okay? Can you? Oh, we got one more. Got to put one on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, put it up here somewhere. Where do you want to put it? Right there? That's a good place. Yes, good. Oh, one more. Okay. Okay. So let's sit down and let's pray. Okay. Thank you, Jesus, for coming, for you are our hope, and we wait for you, and because you came, we do not have to be afraid. Amen. Amen. All right, so now you can go back to your families or you can go to children's worship if you are going there. Let's rise and bow your spear as we sing.
of hope, renew our hope in the coming and the coming again of Jesus, for whom we wait expectantly. Bring your hope, Lord Jesus, into the despair of the world, that by it we may be healed and redeemed. Amen. What are you wishing for this Christmas? What the world needs now is hope. The Matthew Christmas story introduces us to Joseph, who acted with hope and so loved Mary and provided a loving home for the Christ child. It is Joseph who encourages us to live hopefully in this Advent season. Matthew 1, verses 18 through 25. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sisters and brothers, ask a millennial about hope for the future and you might hear something like this. Like everyone in my generation, I find it increasingly difficult not to be scared about the future and angry about the past. I am 35 years old, the oldest millennial, the first millennial, and for a decade now, I've been waiting for adulthood to kick in. My rent consumes nearly half my income I haven't had a steady job since Pluto was a planet, and my savings are dwindling faster than the ice caps that the baby boomers melted. It may not be a different world for you, but it is for us. You've heard the statistics. More millennials live with their parents than in their own families. We are delaying partner marrying and house buying and kid having for longer than any previous generation. The cost of every prerequisite of a secure existence, education, housing, and health care, has inflated into the stratosphere. From job security to the social safety net, all the structures that insulate us from ruin are eroding. It's no surprise that we're the first generation in modern history to end up poorer than our parents. The thing that truly defines us millennials, he says, is not helicopter parenting or unpaid internships or participation ribbons. It is uncertainty. And with that skyrocketing levels of depression, anxiety, and emptiness. The way we are going about life in the world isn't working. The world needs something else. In this Advent season, we bring our fears and our failings to the Lord who has come, who came as God with us, to live as one of us in order to grace us with salvation and who will come again finally and fully to redeem and restore this broken creation trapped in sin. What does the world need now? 
When you listen to millennials, what the world needs now is hope. And the story of Joseph brings hope to us. Before there were millennials living in a shattered world, Joseph was one. This story should be a favorite for the teens and 20-somethings because it gives you this great truth. Rather than saying young people have faith if they believe without doubt, the truth is you have faith if up against doubt, fear, and struggle, you act with hope. Joseph amazes us because he acts with hope. The man chosen to be Jesus' father is a man of hopeful action. We see hope in the actions of Joseph. Joseph shows us that hope expects great things from God. That God with us empowers us to live not resigned but hopeful lives. That when a cross is set before you, God will give you the strength to pick it up, to carry it, and bring the blessings of Jesus that transform fearful and troubling situations. You see, for Joseph, Mary is pregnant. They aren't married yet. Joseph isn't the father. Mary says this is a miraculous work of the Holy Spirit. And while Mary had the benefit of an angel's visit and the comfort of an older and wiser relative like Elizabeth to help her make sense of the news and the coming of Christmas, for Joseph, the first time he hears all about it comes from the street, the neighborhood gossip. Verse 18, Mary was found to be pregnant. So Joseph is troubled, hurting, and confused. Miracles aren't supposed to be so much trouble. Matthew says Joseph considered all this and what to do. And that word pictures an agitation, something that weighs heavy on your mind, and you have no peace about it because you can't figure it out. In his time and culture, Joseph has few options, none of which fix the situation or help him. Mary's apparent unfaithfulness shamed Joseph as well. His neighbors would assume, of course, that Joseph was the one that got her pregnant. They would assume this unless Joseph took the Jewish legal act of divorcing her. Under these circumstances, to fail to divorce Mary would violate law and custom. It would bring enduring reproach on his household. household, never mind the alternative of figuring out how to embrace as his wife one who had been unfaithful to him and betrayed him. So what would you do? He's a young man, probably in his 20s, his whole life ahead of him. He hopes to make a living running a business in town, so his reputation is important for his work. And now he feels he's lost the best thing that ever happened to him. And he'll, along with this woman he loved, forever be fodder for gossip. If anyone ever had a reason to give up, to despair, to live afraid, embittered, it's Joseph. Yet he's the first example of Christian hope in the Bible and in the Christmas story. He meets God. He encounters the Lord as he tried to be faithful, and the blessing of Jesus accomplishes a goodness for him that is beyond his own thinking and abilities and the accepted way of doing things. Let me show you how from the story. Before God steps in, Joseph will try to minimize the damage on his own. 
He will divorce Mary quietly, says the story. That means he won't have a public trial to figure out who's to blame and what all happened and to go through the sort of details that he's figuring in his mind. But without a public trial, he'll not only lose Mary, he'll lose the dowry, he won't recoup the bride price, but he won't publicly shame Mary. And instead, he'll take on the shame. He'll look like a man who has been wronged. Mary will be looked at as a woman of shame, this woman he loved. But that's the best he can do. Joseph doesn't act first for himself, but for Mary. He acts in faith, says the story, despite what it will cost him. Joseph's response is hopeful because he trusts God to make something good out of this mess beyond what everyone is thinking and beyond what he and Mary find themselves in. He knows he will need the grace of God to save him and Mary in this situation. So this opens up possibilities for us as we share in this story. This tells us, since God is with us, the odds change. We can act in hope because of the presence of the Savior. An angel visits Joseph in his dreams. Joseph is told what he can do because of what God is doing. Joseph experiences that he is not alone in this. Joseph encounters the meaning and purpose of God and his gracious place of service in this will of the Lord. God is at work even though no one else can see it. And the angel says, do not be afraid to take Mary to be your wife because what is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Joseph hopes because he knows that God is out and about in this world and in his life. We can hope because this is my Father's world. We can hope because Jesus has come and is coming again. And in the meantime, he is always with us. Do not be afraid. Joseph. God is in this. It's the first word of Christmas. It is the lasting word to us. Jesus is with you. He will bless your sacrifice, your suffering, your faithfulness, your obedience, your trust. So Joseph will take Mary home as his bride. Christmas brings Joseph the grace and truth he needs it's a word of God that delivers Joseph. The angel reveals to Joseph the coming of Jesus, the Savior, God with us, and the salvation God gives, the best present of all. Joseph hears that God is keeping his promises. So this man, who the day before was trapped, limited, restless, feeling doomed, now acts with hope. Verses 24 and 25. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate the marriage until after she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus, Savior. God saves salvation. This young man, hurt and trapped, if he follows the laws of the land, he will lose his love forever, he finds power from God to protect Mary and to make a home for Jesus. That's what matters. God is the God of hope. And God restores. Nothing else could. Now Jesus will have a home in which to grow up until it is time for him to take up the cross on our behalf. Do we understand now something of the blessing Joseph brings to the Christmas story? The cost he chose to bear in obedience to the Lord, the risks he took to love God. 
Look at the results. Because Joseph trusts God for his future, because he will take God at his word, though he can't quite explain it all, because he will do what the Lord commands him to do, Joseph is the one who can be there for Mary. Joseph will be the father of the Christ child. Someone has to love them. Not self-serving, not in it for themselves, not a what-can-I-get-out-of-it relationship, but true godly love laying down one's life for another. That's love. Not feelings, not physical relationships. A decision to set aside one's own wants, needs, and desires so that God's will may be done in another's life. We love with hope. We expect godly experiences of good because of who God is. Out of the worst, the cross of Christ, God brought resurrection and the promise of eternal life, the best. So we exercise hope first by focusing our hope on Jesus and his coming as God with us. When our spirits groan because we have not lived up to the best in us or we have flat out denied or betrayed God's trust, we remember again the cross and empty tomb of Jesus that the sure grace of God is stronger and more real than our greatest failings or fears. To act in hope, practice this reality of redemption. Practice confession of sin. Each day receive assurance of forgiveness Love mercy and kindness first instead of judgment. N.T. Wright says, Hope for the Christian is not wishful thinking or mere blind optimism. It is a way of knowing that new things are possible. Options are not shut down. New creation, not of our own making, can and does happen. Biblical hope is not just an optimistic desire for something good in the future, but rather biblical hope is a confident expectation and desire for God to accomplish something good in the future. For the Bible reminds us, we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. The difference? Well, if our confidence, if our joy, if our peace is based only on certain blessings or outcomes or circumstances, then our hope is forever threatened, fragile, fearful. But if I expect God to do a great thing even without certain blessings, even in the worst of circumstances, then I can truly live and wait patiently. I can sacrifice willingly. I can respond graciously and act with confidence and courage because I can expect the triune God to bring meaning, purpose, and blessing. It's not up to me. It's up to God, and God is up to it. The situation may not be good, but God is good. The circumstances may not be good, but God is present, working kingdom good out of it. God is called the God of hope in the Bible, and we are called to exercise hope. For without hope, other emotions may drive you. You may act instead out of fear or anger or selfishness or trying to justify yourself, and then you just get worse results. Hope expects something better. Hope anticipates God's work 
the Lord's will to be done for our salvation. Anything less, and all we get is more of our own limited, fragile selves. So how can I exercise hope? I can first remember my baptism. When God made a promise that I belong to my Father in heaven, and I can rest my anxious thoughts, knowing that God keeps his promises, and the Lord will finish what he started, hope grows by focusing on Jesus as Savior and Lord, and the promise that that has given to each of us. Prayer then also restores hope within us. Not just praying for blessings, but praying to recognize the presence of the Spirit in our weakness. Many times to pray is to wait. Advent is a season of waiting, longing for Christ to return again. But our waiting isn't empty. Just as in this first Christmas story we meet an expectant Mary, so our waiting expects, anticipates, is pregnant with hope. For we are not alone. We are not left to our own devices. The Spirit is interceding, comforting, counseling. How can you deepen this prayer reality? Pause when you wake up in the morning and thank the Lord that you belong to Jesus. Remember your identity as a child of God, assured that nothing can separate you from his love. Give thanks at each meal. Take time to feed your soul with the will of God through Scripture. Pray a blessing on the work of your hands to join your work to God's work and then worship him with gladness. Then share the stories. Like we share in these Advent Christmas stories in the Bible, the reality of God with us. Well, that's not revealed to us through a lecture or in a textbook, but by sharing in these gospel stories and then sharing in the stories of God alive and at work in your life. Stories of hope, peace, joy, and love. Can you share such a story? A time when you acted with hope? Why you chose hope? What that mattered? The difference it made? A little league game had already started, and a man came to the game late, and so he looked over the dugout, and he asked the little boy sitting there, I just got here. What's going on? What's the score? He says, we're losing 18 to nothing. And the man said, oh, you must be discouraged. And the boy said, no, I'm not discouraged. We haven't even got to bat yet. (laughs) It's time to go to bat with hope. Frederick Buechner says, we have this high and holy hope that what God has done, the Lord will continue to do, and that what he has begun in us and our world, he will in unimaginable ways bring to fullness and fruition. What the world needs now is hope. So let your hope show this season. Amen. Let's pray. Thanks be to God for his living word. Heavenly Father, we wait for the coming of Jesus, and we do so expectantly. Guide us by your spirit, God of hope, making us people of hope. May our hope show in our kindness, in our generosity, in our quickness to forgive, in being slow to anger and in our hunger and thirst for righteousness. Hear our heart's love for those in need today. For Tracy Jarzombek, hospitalized again with fluid buildup. 
for Ginny Jupp and Nancy Van Dyke and Jeannie Wiener and Luann Voss Van Denen bringing strength to each, each day. Be with Elaine Hoving and Gladys Lubin and Grace Beatty recuperating at home. Grant healing mercies to Amy Weinart. May the tests she undergoes this week bring a clear diagnosis so treatment may be discerned and blessed. We pray for those in various senior facilities that you be their strength when they are weak. And we offer up to you our struggles, our fears, our ongoing and chronic illnesses, and ask for your mercy. We end our prayer with ancient words from the prophet Isaiah, fulfilled by Christ's coming and coming into our lives. He will not break a bruised reed or quench a smoldering wick, and in his name the Gentiles will hope. And now, Lord, meet us at your communion table to assure us again that you are with us and we are made to belong to you for your glory in Christ alone. Amen. Before the Lord's Supper, the deacons will lead us in our uh, offering time. And as they come up to lead us, a reminder, uh, looking ahead, December 11, our worship will be a Christmas carol sing with uh, uh, the traditional Christmas songs. Uh, we're blessed. We have opportunity to sing those songs throughout the season, but a lot of people don't. Maybe your neighbors don't. Maybe your friends, family don't. So invite them to come December 11 to join in a Christmas carol sing. So just a quick announcement. Um, the deacons have chosen our Christmas Day offering to be for World Renew. And there are a few ways that you can get involved over the next month. Um, there are gift catalogs out at the Welcome Center, um, so you can take a look through those and find items that you might want to do donate towards. Um, and then there will also be setting up a giving tree on um, the tree in the um, fellowship hall where there will be little cards where you can choose to donate um, money that could help support a family um, with uh, like educational supplies, a chicken, hand washing station, um, seed packets. So there'll be these little cards out on the tree um, in the fellowship hall. And then finally, our offering on Christmas Day will be for World Renew as well. Um, but today's offering is for benevolence, so please pray with me. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day and this opportunity to worship. Uh, may you bless the offering that is collected today uh, to help those um, in our congregation that might be in need. In your name we pray, amen. Yeah. 
I invite you now to the table of the Lord. Please follow along on the screens. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. thanks to God the Father that our Savior Jesus Christ before he suffered gave us this memorial of his sacrifice until he comes again at his last supper the Lord Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way he took the cup after supper and said this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this in remembrance of me. For whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death 
until he comes again. Therefore, we proclaim our faith as signed and sealed in this sacrament. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let us pray. Lord our God, send your Holy Spirit so that this bread and cup may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. May we and all your saints be united with Christ and remain faithful in hope and love. Gather your whole church, O Lord, into the glory of your kingdom. And we join in prayer together with the words Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us join with the living Church of Jesus, rising in body or spirit to declare our faith in the saving work of Jesus with the words of the Apostles' Creed. And so let us say from our hearts, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Congregation of Jesus Christ, the Lord has prepared his table for all who love him and trust in him alone for their salvation. All who are truly sorry for their sins, who sincerely believe in the Lord Jesus as their Savior, and who desire to live in obedience to him, are now invited to come with gladness to the table of the Lord. For these are the gifts of God given for the people of God. Take, eat, and drink, Remember and believe that Jesus gave his body and shed his precious blood for the complete forgiveness of all of our sins. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Let us pray. We thank you, our Lord God, for the hope this meal gives us, that Jesus will return as triumphant king and the dead will be raised. With the whole creation, we wait for the purifying fire of judgment. We face that day without fear, for you, our judge, are our savior. For then we will see you face to face. You will heal our hurts and our wars and make the crooked straight. 
May our daily lives of service aim for the moment when the Son will present his people to the Father and God will be shown to be true, holy, and gracious. Then we will join in the new song to the Lamb without blemish who made us a kingdom and priests. You, our God, will be all in all. Righteousness and peace will flourish. Everything will be made new. And every eye will see at last that our world belongs to God. Hallelujah. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. Let's rise in body or spirit to share in the benediction and blessing of God. So follow on the screens. The cross, the bread, the pain, the joy, the gospel, God's love, the light, the darkness. For Jesus' sake, amen. Glory be, glory be to God the Father.